Hello and welcome to this electrical principles training video. In this video, we're going to continue considering resistors connected in parallel with each other. So this really is the advanced section of the material. Now it's important that you watch this so that you can recognize the method that we're using. And also it's very important to keep on extending yourself, to keep on trying to stretch yourself a little bit. So this is a good uh, method to try and apply in order to do that. So in this video, we're going to consider what happens when you connect resistors in parallel, where you have more than two resistors connected in parallel with each other. So this method will work whether you've got three, four, five, or even a hundred resistors connected in parallel with each other. It's often uh, referred to as the one over RT method. Uh, perhaps more strictly speaking, it should be referred to as the reciprocal method because it uses a specific mathematical function, which we'll talk about in a moment. So again, we've got our electronics board set up ready to go. We've got our multimeter that's set to measure resistance. So we're going to do some calculations and we're going to figure out what the resistance of these circuits will be. So as we've said, in this video now, what we're going to be looking at is what happens when we have three resistors connected in parallel with each other, where all the resistors have differing values. So the method that I'm about to show you uh, will work for any quantity of resistors, whether it is uh, two resistors of the same value, two resistors of different value, three resistors of the same value, there'll be a whole uh, range of applications for this. If you've got resistors in parallel, you can use this method. But also bear in mind that if you've got less than three, if you've got two resistors in parallel, there's other easier methods that you can use. So let's have a look at the circuit that we've built here. As you can see, we've got three resistors connected in parallel. We've got a 27 ohm resistor, a 10 ohm resistor, and an 18 ohm resistor. Now what we're going to do in a minute is we're going to measure the resistance of this circuit. We're going to see what it is, and then we're going to figure out how we can calculate that answer, and we'll get, we'll get reasonably close to it. One thing just to bear in mind, again, we want people to understand what's happening with resistors in parallel, that's very important. But also, if we box a bit clever, we can think about uh, how we can apply this to an exam situation. So here, we've got three resistors connected in parallel. The smallest resistor is worth 10 ohms. And if you've seen another video in this series, you'll understand that our total resistance for this parallel circuit will always be smaller than the smallest resistor. So that means that because we've got a 10 ohm resistor in this circuit, that means that uh, the total resistance is going to be less than 10 ohms. Put yourself in an exam situation if you've got a multi multiple choice exam and you've got four options of total resistance for a parallel circuit and one of those options and only one of those options is smaller than the smallest resistor, that's the right answer. You don't even need to get your calculator out. You know that's the right answer. If there's two answers where the answer is smaller than the smallest resistor, you've got to start doing some calculations. But it's nothing to be afraid of, and we can demonstrate quite nicely how that's done. So first things first, let's have a look at what the total resistance of this circuit is, so we know what we're aiming for. Now bear in mind, our mathematical answer might not be exactly the same as the answer that we get from our real-life multimeter value, but it will be quite close. So we can see that we're somewhere in the 5.5, 5.4, 5 5.5 range, okay? So that means that's the uh, total resistance of this parallel circuit. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna show you how you can actually calculate that value uh, using a calculator. So let's see what we can do in terms of calculating this value then. So the rule that we're going to apply here is what's known as the reciprocal rule. Now, a reciprocal is a very simple mathematical function, and what it means is that if you have a number, its reciprocal is simply 1 divided by that number. So, let's take an example. If we have the number 2, then the reciprocal of 2 would be 1 divided by 2. So, the reciprocal of 2 is simply 1 divided by 2. So the reciprocal of 2 is a half, as you can see here. And we could do the same many times. We could say that the reciprocal of 3 is 1 over 3, or a third. And we can keep going in this vein. So that's just something to bear in mind, that the reciprocal of a number is simply 1 divided by that number. So let's see how we can apply this to our circuit. Now the way that we apply this to our circuit is we look at our circuit and we say we've got three resistors in parallel. We've got R1, R2 and R3. So what we do is we say that the reciprocal of RT or 1 over 
RT, the total resistance, will be equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. So we're going to say that 1 over RT, our total resistance, is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. So in our example here, our values would be, so we start off with 1 over RT, and we'd say we've got 1 over 27 plus 1 over 10 plus 1 over 18. So there's our three values that we substituted in there, our three resistor values. Now at this point, we could make this extremely complicated and say we need to uh, find what's called the lowest common denominator of these three numbers. So that's what you need to do when you add fractions together. That is an important thing to understand, but it also can take quite a long time uh, to figure that out, especially where we've got numbers like this. Uh, so the lowest common denominator of these numbers uh, is going to be quite a big number. So instead, we're just going to go straight to the calculator, and we're going to put this straight in and get the answer out. So if we look at this now, if we go over to our calculator over here, so we've got the Casio FX85 GT+. Plus. What we're going to do here is we're going to use a special button called the reciprocal button, and that is right here. So this button here, marked x to the minus 1, that is the same as saying 1 over x. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So if we say uh, 1 uh, divided by 2 will give us a half like that, and the value of that is 0 0.5. However, if we say 2 to the power of minus 1, so we're going to push this button here, this is exactly the same as saying 1 divided by 2. So if I hit the equals button now, we get once again a half. So this is saying that 2 to the minus 1 is exactly the same as 1 divided by 2. So it's exactly the same uh, value. And we can see that if we push the SD button, we can see that we get 0 0.5. So this takes the place of 1 over, and it simply becomes uh, something to the power of minus 1. So let's see how we can use this to solve our question here. So we've got 1 over 27, so we can write that as 27 to the minus 1. And we're adding that to 1 over 10, so we can do 10 to the minus 1. And then we can say that's the same as saying 1 over 18, or 18 to the minus 1. If this power to the minus 1 isn't quite making sense to you and you'd like to know a little bit more about it, please watch my uh, series of videos on the laws of indices uh, and this will be clearly explained for you there. So what we've done here is we've put in these values which is exactly the same as saying 1 over 27 plus 1 over 10 plus 1 over 18. So let's see what answer we get from this. So we get a value of 26 over 135. Now, we could change that into uh, a decimal, which would look like this, so we can see that we've got some recurring values going. But actually what we can do is simply leave that as a fraction. So what we've found is that uh, over here we've got 1 over RT is equal to 26 divided by 135. So that's what we've got going on there. So far so good. What we haven't done though is found the actual value of total resistance. We found the reciprocal of the total resistance. We found 1 over the total resistance. So if we now want to figure out what the total resistance of the circuit is, the nice thing is that this is a really simple thing to do. All we do is just flip both sides of this equation over. So that looks like this. We've got RT divided by 1 is equal to this side flipped over, which gives us 135 divided by 26. So we've just flipped that on its head. And if we now do this calculation, because of course anything divided by 1 is just the value itself, so we, really what we're saying here is RT, the total resistance, is equal to 135 divided by 26. So we'll do that now. We'll do 135 divided by 26. And we're going to come out with 5.19 ohms. 5.19 ohms. 
So that is our value of total resistance for these three resistors that are connected in parallel with each other. Let's see how that compares. So as you can see from the calculation that we just did, we've got an answer that is very, very close uh, to our total resistance on the multimeter, allowing for tolerances. That's quite an acceptable reading. And that is how you calculate resistors in parallel for any combination of resistors, whether they're same or different or however many there are, that's the method that we use. So we'll just do one final example of a parallel circuit. We'll work through the calculation and we'll see if the answer we get from the calculation gets us nice and close to the answer that we get from the multimeter. So we've got three resistors in parallel, a 27 ohm, a 10 ohm and a 10 ohm. And remember this is a parallel circuit, the current doesn't have to flow through each uh, resistor to get to the next one, it can flow to each resistor independently. So let's do some calculations and see what we get. So let's calculate the example of the circuit that we've set up now. So we're going to start from the same position. We're going to say we've got 1 over RT is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. So again, notice I've written out the formula in full. I know this formula off by heart because I've written it out so many times, okay? So we wanna make sure that when we come to do maths, we lay it out in this way. We show our formula, we show our numbers going in, some working out, and then we show our final answer. And if we do that, whatever exam we're doing, we'll always give ourselves the best chance of getting the highest marks. So let's put in some values here. So we're gonna say we've got one over RT is equal to, We've got 1 over 27 plus 1 over 10 plus 1 over 10. So those are our three values of resistance that we've put in there. We've got 27, 1 over 27 plus 1 over 10 plus 1 over 10. And then we'll do some calculations on the calculator. So we'll put this in. So we've got 27. And remember, we use this power of minus 1 button, the reciprocal button. And remember, 27 to the power of minus 1 is exactly the same as 1 over 27. We're then going to add to that 1 over 10. So we've got 10 to the power of minus 1. And then we've got 10 to the power of minus 1. Notice how just putting it into the calculator like this, it makes it so much easier. We don't have to find the lowest common denominator we can just get straight to our answer. So we've got 32 over 135. So again, changing that into a decimal, we've got some recurring values going on here. So actually it's going to be much easier just to keep on working with the fraction. So we found the answer that the reciprocal of the total resistance, one over RT, is equal to 32 over 100 and 35. So we've got 32 divided by 135. Now let's bear in mind again that when we look at this we've got uh, this value going on so we want to think now how do we get to our final answer. Can you remember how we do it? Well of course we just flip both sides of the equation over. So this side we end up with RT over 1 which is just exactly the same as RT. Any number divided by 1 is just the original value. But on this side, we're going to end up with 135 divided by 32. So something that looks like that. Let's put that into the calculator. So we've got 135 divided by 32. And we're going to end up with this value, which is 4.22 ohms, if we ran that off to two decimal places. So we end up with 4.22 ohms. So let's see how that compares to our measured value. So from our calculations there, we can see that we're hoping to get 4.2 ohms or thereabouts. Of course, it's likely that we'll get a slightly different value, resistor tolerances. So let's, do the, uh, let's turn the multimeter on and see what value we get. So you can see there we've got 4.5 ohms. We were hoping for 4.2, but again, we're well within uh, the reasonable limits imposed by the tolerances of the resistors. So remember the method that we've just looked at today uh, will be good for uh, any 
combination of resistors in parallel, doesn't matter how many you've got, doesn't matter whether they're the same value or different values, it will work for every single one. And if you don't believe me, feel free to re-watch a couple of the previous videos, uh, look at the values that we put in, look at what we got out, and do the calculation using this method, and you'll find that you get to exactly the same result. So I seriously hope that this video has been some help.